Thirdly, we think this is an important issue um, because while we know that corruption and human rights are push factors for migration, um, and we also know that um, that countries of migration, immigration, tend to have lower levels of corruption and human rights. So that's a pull factor. So we want to see how directly or indirectly do migrants make these connections between corruption and human rights, for example. Uh, how do weak human rights cultures and corruption manifest themselves in the lives um, of migrants, including pre-departure? And do these experiences of the migratory journey change um, their original perceptions? Um, so even things like, for instance, the willingness to return to one's country of origin, are those, to what extent are those decisions influenced by the extent of corruption or human rights violations back in, in their countries of origin. So these are the kinds of things that we wanna look into. So there is more to mixed migration in our view than simply on the one hand, the, the debate about economic opportunities abroad and that being the um, predominant interest in migrating or human rights. So we don't think that this, these two diametrically opposed views of migration are very useful. Um, economic opportunity on the one hand and human rights violations on the other, which we usually place in the context of refugee law. Um, in our project, we want to explore how corruption and human rights actually interact. How do people perceive these factors in, these, in their migration decisions and experiences today? So an expert on corruption, I'm gonna, here we go. An expert on corruption um, mentioned that, here, let me go, okay, yeah. Mentioned that, um, Widespread, widespread corruption is a sign that something has gone wrong between the relationship between the state and society. Um, and that corruption and human rights violations can be seen as part of the same social dynamic. They are both about the abuse of power and situations of inequality. Maybe I'll say a word here about corruption because it's not generally something that's talked about in the migration program, I know, um, but it's something that um, I'm a specialist really in refugee law, gender and human rights, but corruption has really captured my imagination and I've, I've gone full throttle into this. And so I, so the definition of corruption that is the most familiar to most people, uh, the most commonly used is the abuse of power for um, the abuse of power for private gain. And it includes acts like bribery, embezzlement, misappropriation of public funds, nepotism, influence peddling, and all forms of extortion. Um, another um, way to describe corruption is in its impact. It benefits the few at the expense of many. That's one way that uh, another expert puts it. So how does corruption actually impact um, human rights? Um, it can mean, for example, that there's a lack, of, a lack of political will or capacity by the state to deliver on human rights. Um, it can also mean that they fail to provide fairly for citizens in keeping with the idea and, and the legal obligation of what we call progressive realization, meaning that socioeconomic and cultural rights, unlike civil, um, and political rights, 
are not something that we expect for immediate implementation, but rather for progressive implementation as the government and the state's uh, capacity increases. Um, what about mixed migration and corruption? Um, we think that corruption plays into migration because of its close connection to issues of governance. So for example, we're talking about mis mismanagement of, of funds, abuse of power, political biases and so forth and elite partiality. So corruption is, can be linked to both directly and indirectly to oppression and the absence of investments into national services, opportunities and addressing inequality. 